Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make a YouTube intro, specifically an animated YouTube intro on your iPhone. And the apps that I'm going to be using for this tutorial is CapCut and iMovie. If you can get the same results with other apps, that's fine. You can just follow this tutorial. But these are the apps that I'm going to be primarily using in this video. Also, I have made a lot of these types of videos, how to make animated intros in the past. I'll have a whole playlist link in the app top where you can find all the previous years' tutorials. But with all that to say, I'm just going to be making a certain type of intro in this video. But if you want inspiration for other types of intros with other kind of effects and glitches and things like that, you can watch some of the previous videos like I've mentioned. So that if you're not like happy with this one, there are other methods that you can also use that um, still work today. They're just other type of intros and other results that you're going to get. So those are entirely irrelevant, but this is just the intro that I'm going to be making in this video. But okay, that's enough said. Let's actually get started with the intro. So like I said, the apps that you'll be needing for this tutorial is CapCut and iMovie. CapCut I've recently been getting into and it's a really nice app because you can do a lot in it for free and it can add a lot of layers and effects for free. So that's why I really like this app. I also made an album on my phone for all the things that I'm going to be using in my video. So I have this background here that I'm going to be using. So that's going to be the background where my text and everything is going to come on to. I have the subscribe button PNG so it has no background or anything. It's a transparent image. And then we have this mouse click pointer that I'm also going to be using. So those are all the things I'm going to be using. If you want to get those things for yourself before you start following the tutorial, you can do that. So just make sure you have a subscribe button, a mouse click for the subscribe button, and also a background. If you're not sure if your background is the right size for a YouTube video, you can also just go into your photos app, click on edit, go to the cropping tool here and go up here and see that it is 16 by nine. So you can also crop it in the photos tool if you wanna make sure it's the right size and everything. But okay, so let's actually get started with this tutorial. So we're gonna go into CapCut and start off there. So I'm gonna create a new project here, and then I'm just gonna be importing my background image here and click on add down here. So now we have our little timeline here. We have some things we can do here at the bottom, but right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first extend the length of this clip so you can see here it says it's three seconds long i'm gonna make it about seven seconds we're just gonna see where that gets us but for now i'm just gonna drag it out to seven seconds and we're gonna start making our intro first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add text to our intro so i'm gonna click on the text option down here and click on add text and i'm just gonna type in my channel's name here but you can do whatever you want so kayla's world and then I'm going to start editing the text. So if you want to know how to edit your text, you just tap on it here. And if you go into a mode where you can't really see where your text is, just make sure you're in the text editing menu, like tap here on text, and then you'll see it appear again, and then you can edit it. I, that was just something that I had a problem with the first time, so just to point that out. But okay, let's get started with styling our text. So I'm just going to go to style here. And I'm going to start um, choosing with a font. So what I really love about CapCut is that you can actually import your own fonts, which a lot of editors don't allow you to do. So if you have a font that you specifically want to use that's not in this app, you can just click on the plus button here and it'll take you to files and you can import it. So you can just download that font into the app here. But I'm just going to be using this font, which I imported, which is called Sunrise International. Um, that's the name of the font. And I'm going to start editing it a bit so I, it looks a bit better and stand out a bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a shadow around it, maybe. I don't want too dramatic of a shadow. You can also play around with adding a background if you want, as you can see here, and choose the coloring. Um, you can also add a stroke around your text or not. You can adjust the spacing, so either character spacing or line spacing if you have two lines beneath each other. And um, you can also adjust bold or italic, things like that. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be going for right now. And now what we want to do is we want to animate our text so that it comes in in a way that looks kind of cool. So there are a few ways you can go about this. You can either just use the animations that they give you in the animation section here. So you can add in in animation and out animation, or you can choose a loop animation. So how this usually works is you can choose an in and out animation. So we'll come in and we'll go out, or you can choose a loop animation, which you can't use in unison with an in and out animation. So this one just has something that it does throughout the entire duration of your text. 
I'm gonna go with wave and you can also adjust how fast or slow this goes by adjusting this bar down here I'm just gonna set it to like 2.5 I think looks pretty good so it's not too slow not too fast um but now as you can see here I can't add an in, in animation because that kind of removes the entire loop animation that I just added. So what I'm gonna do for an in animation is we're gonna use keyframing. Now keyframing is something I'm also always hesitant to recommend to people because it's a hard thing to explain and kind of grasp. But once you play around with it, I'm sure you're gonna get the hang of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my text to the start of my clip. And what keyframing basically does is that for each frame, you can animate something or change something. And then from the duration of the first keyframe to the second keyframe, um, it will take that entire duration to do that change. So for instance, I'm just gonna do a quick little thing here. I'm gonna drag my text to the bottom, click on the keyframe button here, and then I'm all the way here, I'm gonna add a keyframe and then just move my text up. So as you can see, I have a keyframe here and here, and the thing that I changed within my keyframe is that I moved my text, so that it will take the entire duration from first keyframe to the second keyframe to adjust that. So it will kind of look like it's moving up. So that's just my quick little explanation about keyframing so that you can kind of grasp what it does. But for animating my text, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go first to style, bring all my opacity all the way down. So now you can see my text is invisible and it's also at the bottom of my screen. And also make sure to add your keyframe here at the start of the clip so that it saves that this is the thing you wanna set it to when your clip first starts. So it's no visibility and also at the bottom of the screen. Then I'm gonna add a keyframe a few frames later, maybe here, we can adjust it afterwards, where I'm gonna move my text to the middle of the screen and I'm also going to bring my opacity all the way up. So then this is what it's going to look like if I click play. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my text a bit from the start of the clip. So it has a bit where it's like plain and nothing showing. So like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to extend the duration of my text because I'm going to want it to show a little longer than that. So click play and it's doing its thing. And then after a while, I'm gonna want it to stop and move out of the screen. So I'm gonna want it to go up. So then again, we're gonna go maybe like here at four seconds. I'm gonna add a keyframe to my text. And that keyframe here is, we're not gonna change anything because from the duration of this keyframe to this keyframe, we don't want anything to change. We just want it to do the little thing. And then from this, keyframe to the, let's say here, I'm gonna add a keyframe. We want it to move up and we want the opacity again to go to zero. So then this is what it looks like. And it moves out of the screen. So that is what we're gonna be doing for our text to animate it and also have that loop happening at the same time. So right after this keyframe, I'm just gonna split my text and delete it so that that's not a problem anymore. Okay, so don't mind, I just made a few little adjustments here and there. So I just added a stroke around my text just to make it stand out a bit more. So yeah, you still get the gist. We have our text coming in and then our text moving out. But now what I want to do is when my text moves up, I want my subscribe button to move from the bottom of the screen up into the middle of the screen. So I'm going to add in my subscribe button right now by clicking on the stickers tab here. And you'll see they have a bunch of stickers that you can use already. But I'm going to click on this button here, which allows you to add in a photo from your camera roll. And then I'm going to click on the subscribe button here. So um, let me just time this right. So we have our text moving out. So I'm going to move my subscribe button to here. And I'm going to move it, or I'm first going to size it to the size that I want it to be. Maybe like that. And it has to be at the middle. But for now, for the when the subscribe button comes into the screen, I'm going to drag it to the bottom here. So as you can see, it's not visible. But since this is a different type of like image, I can move it out of the way without having to adjust its opacity. Since it is, um, you know, just like you can't see it either way. 
but then when the text moves out i want my subscribe button to come in so first i need to add a keyframe when it appears so that it is set to here at the bottom and then it's out move my subscribe button up into the middle of the screen and also add a keyframe like that so let's play this back okay i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust the starting point a bit so that it doesn't move in so quickly so just going to move it like so so we're still going to move it off of the screen here but it's just going to look like it's coming in slower. Let's see that playback. Yeah, it's a bit slower. I like that better. So this is what it looks like now. There's a subscribe button coming in. And then once it's here, I want to add in my mouse click. So the mouse click, we're going to keyframe so that it looks like it's actually clicking on the subscribe button. So we're going to again add in a sticker and add in the mouse button that I have here, the PNG. So this mouse pointer, add that in. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag that to the bottom of the screen. I'm first going to make it smaller, so like that. Drag it to the bottom of the screen. That's the lowest it'll go, sadly. And sadly, with stickers, you can't actually adjust the opacity, which is kind of sad. But I'm going to add a keyframe to at the starting point. We're going to move a few frames, have the subscribe button, and then come in like this. I'm going to also rotate it a bit uh, like that. So this is what it looks like when it comes in. It's a bit too fast. So I'm going to slow it down just a bit by moving it a few more frames like here. Then we're going to move it a frame, like a very quick frame, make it smaller. Re remain the same rotation, make it smaller. And then again, making it bigger. and then moving it out of the screen here. So let's play that back and see if it looks realistic. So it's going out, subscribe button comes in, click out. It's a bit fast, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it like that. So it looks pretty good. I did adjust it a bit so that it doesn't look so fast. So this is what we have now. So I think that looks pretty cool. Oh, the only thing I want to change is this, that I just want this to go, like split it here, delete that so that it doesn't show in the corner anymore so that it looks like this. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, that's about it for the animation, I think. You can adjust it even more to your liking. You can also um, animate the subscribe button to go out if you want to. So I think I'm going to do that real quick just so that it doesn't just like chop it off there so when that moves out i think i'm just gonna let my subscribe button also move up so i'm just gonna add a keyframe here so that's gone keyframe and then add the keyframe here again and have it move up okay so that is that for our tutorial and everything um now i'm just gonna export this video you can also adjust the quality of your video by dragging or adjusting this little thing here. You can set it to 4K as well if you want to, to have a better quality and everything. And then we can click here to export our video. So now I'm just gonna go into iMovie real quick, edit the music in and also edit in sound effects. I get all of my music and set effects from Epidemic Sound, which is a subscription-based thing, but you can also just get music and sound effects from YouTube or other places that are free. So just keep that in mind. I'm just gonna go to my thing and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so this is the final product. After I edited a bit, I did um, cut out the ending a bit so that it doesn't have um, as much at the end so that it's quicker. So this is what it looks like. So that's pretty plain and simple. Uh, it's nothing too special. You can add more upbeat music if you want. That's just the music that I decided to go for. Um, and also you can just play around with it a bit more, make it more your style. But that is how I got the results of this intro. 
I hope that this helped you guys helped you guys like get some inspiration for an intro for your YouTube channel. Um, also try out CapCut. I really have been enjoying using it, and just play around with keyframing. Um, you'll get the hang of it after a while. I hope I explained it well enough. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other questions you might have for me about this tutorial. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see all of my other intro tutorials and things like that. And click on the video to see my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!